Yes, uh, thank you for inviting me. And um, I will speak about uh, applying backward nested subspace inference to tori mostly and in the paper also polyspheres. Um, but um, here I will focus on the torus um, part. So um, let's start um, with um, uh, the uh, data we are looking at. Um, so um, as, as you may know, RNA um, is, is uh, essentially a long chain molecule. Um, so um, we have a backbone chain um, and in, uh, in um, uh, regular uh, distances, some bases are attached to that and the backbone chain um, um, consists of a sugar um, and uh, a phosphate always um, uh, uh, following each other. So um, these, um, these RNA chains uh, are now uh, characterized, the, their shape is, is characterized uh, in order to um, characterize the, the shape of RNA because um, as you may also know or, or not, um, DNA usually forms um, uh, double helix structures, whereas RNA structures uh, are usually very, um, uh, very uh, irregular because RNA um, is usually single-stranded and therefore um, couples with itself. Um, but there are also some repetitive RNA structures, um, and uh, yeah, but uh, RNA is in general uh, richer in structural elements than uh, DNA, and therefore uh, structure analysis of RNA is somehow more of a thing. Okay. Um, now, how is this uh, this RNA structure? Uh, described uh, geometrically. Um, this is usually done by uh, dihedral angles. So um, four consecutive atoms of the backbone um, are, are seen as, as defining an open book, and the opening angle of this book is the dihedral angle. So returning to the slide before, um, these alpha, beta, gamma, delta, epsilon, zeta, and chi are the seven dihedral angles which are usually uh, considered um, most uh, expressive to describe the geometry of this uh, backbone and also the coupling of the base. So, um, essentially with these uh, seven dihedral angles, we get a torus data space, seven dimensional torus, because every angle can run from zero to uh, two pi. Um, and uh, so every backbone geometry um, is, uh, so the backbone part uh, corresponding to one base is usually called a residual. So the residual geometry is characterized as a point in uh, a seven-dimensional torus. All right. So what we would like to do is um, to do kind of a variance analysis uh, in the torus. Uh, so something uh, principal component-like. And um, this is, of course, uh, not as simple as uh, in a linear set. So, uh, uh, to do some kind of a, a dimension reduction, um, which uh, is basically what, what we do when we do um, 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 variation ana analysis, uh, one, one uh, essentially finds a sequence of nested subspaces. But the problem is, uh, for the torus, we don't find a good construction scheme, because most, uh, almost all geodesics run around indefinitely, like for example this, this red one here. The blue are two examples of geodesics that don't run around indefinitely, but almost all uh, actually um, run densely in the torus. And this is obviously a, a, a bad feature. And also the um, symmetry group of the torus is very low dimensional, it's only the torus itself. So we don't have a generic rich set of uh, submanifolds. And, um, and therefore, we, we have trouble finding a, um, a sequence of nested subspaces. So an alternative approach um, that's often taken in this uh, kind of situation is to map to <coughs> space. And the best known um, approach uh, is to map to tangent space, um, where, of course, here we would uh, ignore the cyclic topology of the torus. Um, so that point that can be uh, very close by on the torus are ripped apart on the um, on the tangent space, and um, what we are considering here is um, deforming to a sphere. There are also very nice dimension reduction methods for spheres. Spheres are also uh, very highly symmetric, so um, uh, getting a good construction scheme for 
um, for sub manifolds is, is uh, not so much of a problem. Um, but uh, the point, um, uh, the, the, the downside of our construction here is that we can do the opposite, namely squeeze points close, uh, close together with, which were originally far apart. And uh, to avoid this, we uh, kind of uh, try to um, do our, constructor, um, our construction uh, data-driven in, in such a way um, that we uh, have the deformation as far as possible from the data. The same thing, of course, you would do for, for a tangent space PCA. Um, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so um, the basic idea um, of the deformation uh, is essentially to take uh, the torus angles and uh, consider uh, them as spherical angles, but um, not just right away. First of all, we would like to center them in a, in a reasonable way to avoid, uh, as I said, the uh, um, um, problematic um, um, distortions. And we can, we might be uh, forced to rescale them because uh, spherical angles, uh, all except the uh, most inner one, um, except the innermost, uh, run only from zero to pi and not from zero to two pi as the torus angles. And um, also, uh, we might want to permute this um, circle so um, uh, as to avoid uh, large. Um, uh, deformation through this factor, uh, prefactor of the sign. So um, <clears throat> now um, here I, I state all these um, these uh, um, uh, these degrees of freedom, and now I will uh, explain how we fix them. Uh, for the centering, we don't take the mean, but uh, the the um, antipode of the center of the largest gap. Um, this is uh, really to avoid points near the, uh, near the uh, regions where we cut open the torus and we have uh, topological identifications then. Um, then um, the sorting is done in such a way that the data spread, which is defined uh, using this, uh, this uh, centering, this um, gap, so this is not really a variance because um, this here is not really the mean. Um, uh, but yeah, we sort these uh, circles by data spread, and we say the uh, the one with the uh, smallest data spread is the outermost. The one with the largest data spread is the innermost. Because um, if you remember the sine square uh, factors um, uh, in the line element, uh, they are um, multiplied. So the outermost is multiplied with all uh, inner angles and so on whereas the innermost uh, doesn't um, add a, a sign factor, so that, uh, the, the variance there is no problem, it does, uh, or it doesn't have distortion. And uh, finally, we will have to halve all the angles, uh, except the uh, innermost, uh, in this case because our data uh, will be fairly spread out. <coughs> this is a um, yeah, possibly unfortunate feature of this uh, RNA data. Okay. Um, and we, we will have uh, some topological identification. So we, uh, as I said, we cut open um, the outer angles, but uh, we don't want to lose this topological structure as we would in tangent uh, space PCA. So uh, we keep track of these uh, cutting open and, uh, and identify uh, the corresponding points. Um, and for example, if we have just a two-dimensional uh, example, the, um, the north pole and south pole of the resulting sphere will be glued together. So essentially, you could also think of a, a torus, which we pinch so that we have somehow like uh, something like a sausage where two ends are attached to each other, right? Um, topologically. And uh, essentially, um, in, in general, the, the gluing set has co-dimension two always. Um, so for a two-sphere, it's a point, and uh, for uh, a seven-sphere here, it will be a five-dimensional subspace. All right. So um, what do we do for dimension reduction and uh, hypothesis testing? So what we, we are aiming at here is, is hypothesis testing in the end. Uh, we want to uh, look um, for uh, RNAs from uh, different situations. So we want to com uh, compare um, transcription RNA to ribosomal RNA, which are very different um, types and, and have very different function. The transcription RNA um, is only used to transcribe uh, DNA or no messenger RNA into proteins. Uh, it usually has a T, um, T kind, sh um, yeah, a, a kind of T shape. The, the, um, this also contributed to the name of tRNA. 
Um, whereas ribosomal RNA is essentially um, part of uh, the structures of, of ribosomes, which are translators from DNA to messenger RNA. Um, are they? No, maybe they trans. They are, no, I think they, they are the ones that create the tRNA. Anywho, uh, ribosomes are, are little organelles that consist of um, uh, a protein and RNA. And so uh, the ribosomal um, RNA structures are usually more diverse. Um, <clears throat> and also much larger. Okay, um, so uh, for the dimension reduction on the sphere, we uh, uh, use principal nested spheres. Uh, which means we use a sequence of best-fitting subspheres of co-dimension one. Um, and uh, to determine these sub subspheres, um, in each step we do a least squares fit using torus distances, um, and, uh, but uh, we determine foot points using spherical geodesics. So uh, it's kind of a hybrid approach where we try to uh, remember the original torus geometry, but not all the way. Um, and um, so, so essentially, really, these uh, these subspaces are really spheres here, and in the tor um, mapped back to the torus, these will uh, um, give rise to very irregular subspaces. Um, so, so oddly shaped, possibly. Um, but on the other hand, there's a, a, this is um, just a construction scheme, and uh, this uh, construct construction scheme is regular in a sense, and um, the the resulting space. Um, may look uh, somewhat funny, but uh, we have a rich parametric family, and that's the point here. Um, okay, and these are the minimization problems we have at each step. Um, so this is essentially just an M estimation, um, um, which uh, is, is, is nothing too, too complex uh, uh, after all. Um, but now the question is really, um, what, what about uh, when we do hypothesis testing, what about the asymptotics, what about uh, um, uh, uh, consistency of all this? Um, so for, for a single step, uh, uh, for a single end estimation, consistency and as asymptotics are, are well known and have also been carried over to uh, general um, uh, metric spaces or even slightly more general than metric spaces. Um, but uh, here, every estimation step uh, depends on all the previous estimation steps. So essentially, um, what, uh, what I've given you there is not really the full picture um, of, of the M estimation, but uh, we have essentially an M estimation with, um, with constraints, where the constraints are all the previous M estimations. Um, so um, what about the asymptotics of, of this sequence? And especially, what uh, about the asymptotics of only one uh, piece of this sequence, for example, the uh, the ultimate point we get, the nested mean or backwards mean here, um, and and uh, a priori this is not clear. We have uh, seven M estimations we do, and uh, who, who will guarantee us that this uh, ultimate point we get still uh, follows any sensible uh, asymptotics? <coughs> so we did that. Um, the, the basic setting here is we have a sequence of sub, uh, um, topological spaces, which are the parameter spaces of M estimation, um, as you know. So in this case, these are spaces of subspheres. Um, and we have uh, some, some kind of uh, loss function, which is a slight generalization of distance functions um, uh, of, of, of a metric. And uh, we have some data space from which we start. And every, uh, every um, point in one of the parameter spaces gives rise to a subspace again, and then, of course, also to a subspace of the following parameter space. So if we, once we have fixed an S6, we can no longer get uh, every S5, because uh, this S5 needs to be nested in the uh, first found S6, right? And this is um, what I mean by, uh, by this structure here. Um, so we have uh, only a subspace of all the S5s in the original S7. Um, and we, have, uh, we need to have some projections also for each step, and th uh, these projections will also have to satisfy certain properties. Um, and we call such a, su such a sequence of subspaces, of nested subspaces, a backward nested family of descriptors, uh, we, we choose descriptor instead of parameter here, because one could do parametric models, and then we're in a world of hurt. Um, so uh, we, we can describe this, this space of uh, um, backward nested families. Uh, we can do um, these concatenated 
projections along the whole family. Um, and in fact, in, in uh, principal nested spheres, it turns out um, this, this projection really only depends on the ultimate space. Um, so all the steps in between um, really uh, uh, um, don't uh, change the projection here. Um, and um, yeah, and we can define some, some overall distance measure, which is also um, um, needed for, for the asymptotic uh, theory then. Um, and um, I cannot go into detail with the asymptotic uh, theory, I'm already over time. Um, so, but suffice it to say, we can define sample and population minimizers, we can show strong consistency, and we can show asymptotic normality um, uh, using these Lagrange multipliers. But due to this uh, very complicated formulation with the Lagrange multipliers, it's virtually impossible to give a, a closed form, um, form uh, for the covariance, even in the simple case of, of uh, principal nested spheres. And so uh, we um, uh, use, uh, we, we have to uh, drag out a bag, uh, our uh, bag of tricks to get uh, the t-square statistics, um, namely uh, by using the bootstrap to estimate the covariance. And uh, here we directly estimate covariances of the means with, uh, by, by using the bootstrap, by bootstrapping say, thousand uh, representations, um, realizations of the mean, and then taking the covariance of these. And, um, and by this we can define uh, t-square statistics, and we need some uh, additional assumptions, of course, for, for the bootstrap to also be uh, well behaved, but uh, under these assumptions the bootstrap will also um, satisfy uh, the usual asymptotic theory, and this is really uh, an asymptotically f or t-square distributed <laughs> statistic. Um, but uh, we usually also um, bootstrap our quantiles uh, to have a better uh, coverage for, for uh, small sample sizes. All right, now the application to RNA, very briefly. Um, we take um, uh, 100, uh, 1,100 residues from tRNA and roughly 4,000 uh, residues from uh, ribosomal RNA, and we perform uh, the torus deformation on the full joint data set. And then we pick two random subsets uh, of, of uh, 500 residuals from each of the sets. So this is just a proof of concept idea to see um, um, these two, of course, uh, should should not. Uh, um, uh, so here we should not reject the uh, null hypothesis of equality. Whereas uh, if we do these cross comparisons, we might actually reject the null hypothesis. And we perform PNS based on uh, um, the two sample tests only for the nested mean and the S1 on each of these pairs, because these are maybe the most uh, illustrative. And the result is, as we expected, that for, um, for uh, what, when the null hypothesis is actually realized, we don't reject, and when the null hypothesis is not realized, in this case we actually reject for the uh, nested mean, but not for the S1. And, um, well, I, I suspect, I, I don't have uh, this bulletproof, but I suspect um, that this is not due to high um, variance of these S1s, but they actually uh, uh, have essentially the same S1s, um, because the, the main clusters uh, of residues um, are essentially the same for, for uh, also different types, uh, types of RNA. But uh, the, the different, uh, the, the uh, relative weighting of the clusters differs here. And this uh, drags the means on this, uh, these best fitting circles apart. Yes, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Any question? Yes. Very general question. You start. You say that you start from the orders. Yes. But uh, considering uh, physical considerations, isn't that a bit too uh, uh, general, too liberal? Because some of the angles are surely limited by. I mean, not every combination of angles is possible. Yes. So. Um, From, from geometrical and, and uh, biochemical uh, considerations, one would expect uh, the angles to be fairly strongly clustered. Um, unfortunately, the clusters are not very dense, or not as dense as, as one, one would maybe hope. And, and the point is that um, the data are usually acquired by X-ray scattering uh, experiments, and then 
um, you don't see, uh, you cannot uh, extrapolate a single atom positions. They can usually um, uh, work out uh, base positions and sugar ring positions, sometimes also the phosphate position, sort of. So, um, since one phosphate and uh, one uh, sugar ring um, uh, give rise to six atoms of a backbone, these atom fits are done by a computer and some of them are apparently not very good. And um, uh, this can even be seen if one adds in hydrogen atoms, this has been done 15 years ago uh, by some people, by some biologists, um, that there are a lot of clashes where um, there are impossible um, uh, uh, situations. So, so in, in, in this case, really, we, we have to deal with very flawed data. Um, and uh, of course, uh, trying to, to understand this data best, better uh, also is a sort of aiming at uh, improving uh, these, these fitting procedures, basically. So, yeah. And for the sake of time, I propose that we move on to the next door, so we'll mm -hmm. thanks again.